It's Nightside with Dan Ray on WBZ, Boston's News Radio. Thank you very much, Al. Not good news from Polar Park, but that's okay. That's okay. It's a long season. It is an absolute long season. Well, um, it's been a long week. However, we saved the best for last. And joining us tonight um, remotely, uh, because all my shows are remote, uh, are my great friends uh, who I've been big fan of for a long time, uh, Bill and Bo Whitaker of the uh, the great Whitaker Band, uh, which I think is the best band in Boston. You can you can take Aerosmith and all those other bands and all that. I'll, I'll I will take the Whitakers, gentlemen. Welcome back to Nightside. Oh, thanks so much, Dan. Uh, this is Bo starting off, and uh, it's just a great pleasure to have this opportunity to be with you tonight. Thank you so much. Uh, well, I hope that you're both there. I know it's difficult uh, because we're not in a studio, and I hope I don't know if there's any way that we could get a little bit of music at some point as the um, as the hour goes of on. We but can. I, I want to give people an opportunity to uh, to catch up with you. You guys are as active as ever. Um, in talking to um, to Bill the other day, I didn't realize that the really the genesis of the Winterker Band goes all the way back to 1939. I think Bill told me that story the other day. Uh, um, that is, that's correct, Dan. Yeah, quite, quite a legacy and a history. It starts with your dad, right? Uh, well, we really owe it all to our late father, Ed Winokur, because uh, what he did was he, he trained the two of us uh, as young boys. Uh, my father uh, had his first band in 1939, and in 1962, he did something which was quite amazing, Dan. He let all the musicians go from his regular band that had played with him for years, and they formed the Winokur family band. So um, we've been doing this for a long time. And I'll tell you, it's still a thrill for me and Bill every single time we perform. Now, now you guys, over the course of a year, okay, um, how many performances and Jen, I'm sure you must keep count in some respects, but um, I know there are there are weekends when you do two events, uh, you know, two um, uh, two, two sets or whatever. Uh, how, yeah. how many performances over the course of a of a year do you normally do? Do you know every week is different? Sometimes there's two, sometimes there's five. It's just a little different, and and you know our business is is a seasonal business. As well, I mean, we have our seasons where we're very busy, May and June, July and August, September, October, are busy months and January, February and March are quiet because usually there's a lot of snow in the ground in Boston, even though we didn't have it this year. Sure. Well, you got to take a little bit of a break and uh, and, and, and fresh and you get fresh and all of that. Um, of all the places, it, well, how I assume. How many states have you been in? I assume you've been in, in every New England state at a minimum. Oh, f for sure. We, we've been all around New England, and I've done a lot of traveling. For example, I traveled with the Stan Kenton Orchestra in 1972 and 1973, and we probably went to 40 states uh, playing with a 19-piece jazz orchestra. We also traveled all across Europe um, as well. So... Um, We've done a lot of traveling, but with our Winokur band, we went to Washington, D.C. in uh, 1993 to play at President Clinton's uh, inaugural ball. Um, they sent a big bus up for us, and uh, <laughs> there were 21 musicians that went to Washington to play at that inaugural, and uh, Aretha Franklin sang with our band that night. There were 3,000 guests at that event uh, in the Washington, D.C. Convention Center. It's a night that I will never ever forget. Wow, but it doesn't doesn't get much bigger than that. That that is for sure. So uh, it never gets old. I, I I know you both well enough to know that the passion that you have for the music and for what you do it, it never gets old. Uh, every time I've I've heard you, uh, you bring that 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 joy de vivre, that that passion to the stage, and you're just having fun. I mean, it just. Very few people have a job which allows them to have as much fun as you guys have. You're very lucky. <laughs> Do you know what we inherited from our father, Ed, um, who was our mentor, and he taught us a trade uh, at a very early age that we've been able to use our whole lives? 
But my dad was thrilled by every single performance he ever played. It was he'd come home and he'd say that was the best performance I've ever been on. <laughs> it, and uh, you know he had his band and Bill had his band and I had mine. And we'd come home at the end of the night. And my mother would be. Uh, cooking up a storm for us and, and we'd be talking about our performances and and it, it was just a thrill and, and that's what we inherited from our dad is just the joy that we get interestingly enough dan we have performed at thousands of weddings I, i'm not talking about hundreds i'm talking about thousands of them through the years mine by the way i know that yeah. I, I know that i remember very well but but um one of the great benefits of what we've done over the years is no matter where we go in the city of Boston, we always run into a couple that we have performed for. Wow. And it's just the most glorious feeling you could ever imagine for them to tell us how they never forgot. I was just someone today was, I was with someone earlier today. I played at their wedding 30 years ago and he's still telling me that people are still talking about the music at that wedding. I find it a little hard to believe, but he, he's, that's the gospel according to my friend, Fred. Who, well, let's, uh, do th- let's do this. Okay. We're up on a break here. So what I want to do is I want to invite people to call. Um, and if, if they have a recollection, maybe they can, uh, they can tell you where they saw you uh, and um, and when, and maybe uh, you can share some stories. I also thought that maybe, uh, I, I know I'm hitting you with this and I should have been prepared, maybe we could just do a little bit of music as we bump out here, since um, uh, I, I don't know if there's something that, that you, you want to suggest. Sure. What, what, do you, what do you want to suggest? Well, just, you know, something short, 30 seconds or so, we'll bump out, and then we'll come back and we'll get some phone calls. Before you do it, let me give the phone number, 617-254-1030, 888-929-1030, 617-931-1030. Lord knows we've had one of those weeks where we've had a lot of tough stories, and I thought this would be normally... We, we end with the 20th hour, and tonight we're going to do Brushes with Celebrity. I'm going to probably have you guys later on tell me a couple of your brushes with Celebrity, which I'm sure will be unmatched. Uh, we won't be able to match them in the 11, but we'll try. But So we'll, what are we going to hear here for about 30 seconds, and then we'll... Uh, well, well h- how about uh, with a little help from my friends? All right. You guys go ahead. Take control. You got it, Rob. Hit it, let him hit it for about 30 seconds. In the meantime, you folks can dial on in. family band and uh, we're going to uh, take some phone calls here thank you very much for that uh, that little musical interlude maybe we'll try to do something every uh, every every segment go right ahead go ahead Uh, so uh, I want to just say a couple of words about my two favorite dams in the Boston area okay and and they are Dan Shaughnessy and Dan Ray thank you (laughs) the two of you the two of you are the best at what you do Dan writes stories in the Boston Globe that touch every emotional feeling I have in my body. And Dan, you are the best interviewer around for so many years, always so prepared. I've learned so much about so many topics thanks to you. Your show is always on in our home, and I haven't made up one of those words. Well, I appreciate that very, very much. Your feelings are more than mutual towards you guys. Let's we got we got three very different states calling in here to start. Let's go to Mark down in Florida. Hey, Mark, welcome. You're on with um, Bill and Bo Winokur. Go ahead, Mark. Yes, uh, good evening, Dan. Good evening, Bill and Bo. I've got some great uh, fond memories. Uh, I was a young trumpet player in the West Point Band in the uh, military academy. Went up to Emerson College to finish up my degree, got out of there, and then jobs were tough in radio. And I got a job at the Parker House Hotel from uh, 1981 through 1983 at the front desk. Wow. So I would listen. Yeah, I would listen to the Winokur Orchestra 
every Friday, Saturday night, wafting up from the last hurrah, which truly was a legendary Boston speakeasy. And uh, we'd have luminaries come through there, like Ted Kennedy, Tip O'Neill, Ray Flynn, Kevin White. And, uh, you know, I used to hang with some of the guys in the band just being at the front desk. They'd be on break. But it was a great environment, great band, and, and uh, just great fond memories of, uh, of the Winter Orchestra. And Ed was around then, too. So it was just a, a great – we had a bunch of characters that worked at the Park House Hotel, too. Did, that, that, did, that did we ever – did family. Did, do you know we played there for 14 years, six nights a week and Sunday afternoon brunch. It was just unbelievable. And we loved the Dunphy family, the nicest people you'll ever meet in your whole lives. And we met many of them. They were great. Yeah, Jerry Dunphy, Walter Dunphy, all the great folks. Of course, they sold it off, I think, to Omni. I think Omni still might have the hotel. But uh, legendary band, and, and you're spot on with the, the uh, kind words for uh, – the iconic and legendary Dan Ray and Dan Shaughnessy, yeah. too. And Dan truly is the – Dan Ray certainly is the uh, iconic uh, torchbearer for the uh, WBC, a great legendary station, too. So that's all I've got to say, guys. But Mark, uh, you're very kind. Thanks, though, as usual. And, well, <laughs> wow. it's great to hear the winner. Are... I just will – I'll just say the trumpet that I play currently, I have two con constellations, old big band horns, big uh, medium hey. large horns, 53 Bs, nice horns. So Those are the horns that Maine and Ferguson used. They were, yeah. Maynard played on the 53B, nice con constellation. So a little uh, trumpet clock there for you. Well, it's so, it's so great to hear from you. What what a great first call. Thank you so much. Let me ask you this, well, uh, Mark. When you were there, um, I'm, I'm t- I, I was told a story by Bill Winokur once that um, Bette Midler actually showed up there after having performed in Boston, and then um, – she went down and uh, and sat and uh, and listened to the uh, to the Winokers. Were you, were you there by any chance that night? I was not there that night, but I can tell you that I did have some run-ins with uh, s- some uh, luminaries, such as a Jane Fonda funny story at the desk there, and then uh, with Vincent Price, uh, the band The Clash came through, destroyed the. Uh, uh, one of the suites upstairs and uh, a <laughs> great punk rock band. And I have a lot of stories about the, the NBA players all used to stay there. They'd skip out on their incidental charges all the time. Well, you know, so, I uh, became, ve- I became very good friends with Bob Lanier. Yeah. Oh, you know, we, we played the we played the national anthem at Boston Celtic games uh, for five seasons in the 1980s. And uh, we became very friendly with uh, Larry Bird and uh, Kate, Casey Jones and a lot of the Celtics and a lot of the team stayed at the uh, Parker house, but Bob Lanier had a size 22 sneaker. It was the biggest one of all time. And he used to come over to me before I played the anthem and he used to pick me right up off the ground. It was unbelievable. <laughs> That's a great story. Yeah. Well, great times guys and, and truly yeah. a legendary band in Boston. Great band. And, uh, and it's great to hear you. It's great to have Dan have you on uh, WBC. Thank you, Mark. Appreciate it very very much. Stay dry down there in Florida, okay? All right, Jens. Thanks. Thanks guys. Yep. Okay. Good night. Um, very quickly, um, uh, the Bette Midler story, um, Bill, uh, what is it like when someone of that stature decides to mosey on down after she's performed somewhere in Boston and sit in and just listen to your music? Is that a little intimidating? Uh, uh, no, it's kind of, it's thrilling. You know, it's really thrilling. So the, the the last hurrah was in the basement of the hotel. So from the bandstand where I where we all were playing, we could see every single person that would walk down the stairs to come in to the room. So I saw, I look I'm looking up while I'm playing. I'm always looking around and smiling, and I see Beth coming down the stairs, and she had played at the concerts on the common. Uh, that was a new thing that the mayor started and um and because of that we met many many other stars but when bet came down it caught my attention and she came down alone and she sat uh in the table right next to the bandstand mm-hmm. and uh you know it was just a thrill to have her there when naturally we were playing our very best we always are anyway but with her she inspired us and I sat down with her on the first break, and she said, wow, you guys are great. And we talked and talked, and then we went back and played the second set. And um, I asked her if she wanted to sing. She said no. And then uh, so we played three sets, and wow. he, I sat down with her after each set. Good. And after the after we finished, she said, okay, I'll sing. Whoa. And, she, and she came up. 
And uh, everybody knew she was in the room. I mean, it was a buzz going around. The waitresses are telling everybody, and everybody's looking at her. And and uh, I had spent each break with her, and we we're having a great time talking. And she, and uh, she got up and sang, and you could hear, you couldn't hear a pin drop. I mean, people were just riveted. And she sang three songs, and people clapped so loud it was like we were at Carnegie Hall or something. Uh, that was a so thrill. She had you, you. You had to be able, I assume, to adapt to her, meaning uh, you weren't telling her the song. She told you the song she wanted to sing. Oh, she, she told us what she wanted to sing, and she would say, I want to do it in E-flat or F or C. You know, a, a professional singer will tell you what key they want to do it in. And if you're a professional musician, it's like you're on a team of uh, plumbers or electricians. You know, they, you, you know how to work together. Sure. You know what you're doing. So if the musicians are good, they can play with anybody. And it sounds like you've been playing with them for years. And uh, we we locked right in, and it was a highlight of, you know, our career, playing with that. Wow. And you know who else uh, used to come to the last tour all the time to sing with us? The uh, former coach of the Celtics, uh, Casey Jones. Oh, yeah. yeah. Did, did did you know that he was a great singer? Yes, yes, I did. Yeah. Uh, uh, for some, he was a crooner. Uh, yeah, he, he was unbelievable. And, and he would come down after a game. He came down many times after a game, and and boy, he would mesmerize the audience. Just the same thing as with Ben and, and people. You could hear a pin drop, and boy, he was unbelievable. Listen, do we have time to read a couple of sentences that? Dan Shaughnessy wrote in his book about the history of the Boston Celtics. Sure, go ahead. Um, Absolutely. So, you, got it? We got the, you got the book, we got the time, okay. guys. So, okay, so it's, uh, this is uh, 1985, Game 6 against the Los Angeles Lakers. Yep. Before Game 6, Johnny Most got his evening off to a fine start by telling his listeners that Lakers forward Kurt Rambis had just crawled out of a sewer. <laughs> <laughs> the anthem was performed by Bo and Bill Winokur, a bugle and snare drum combo that had played dozens of anthems at the Garden over the years. Los Angeles-based superstar performer Stevie Wonder offered his services for the anthem, but loyal Celtics vice president Todd Rosenzweig said, there is superstition. <laughs> we ended up playing. Yes, and, and uh, boy, what a thrill it was to stand on that parquet with... Uh, 13,909 at the time, uh, filling the rafters and, and uh, playing that national anthem. Boy, what what a thrill. And uh, that's and something I'll never forget. Is, did, did the superstition work? Did the Celtics win that night? Uh, no, they did not win that oh. night. But but we the, the anthem was a success that night. But unfortunately, they didn't win. Okay. Well, you guys were one for one, and the Celtics maybe weren't. So let's 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 play a little bit out here. We're coming up on the okay. news. So uh, tell us what you want to give to us real quickly as we okay. uh, as we hit the news. It don't mean a thing unless you got that swing. All one. right, hit it, gentlemen. Bo and Bill Winokur will take us to the news. News Radio. We are with, um, well, not we're phys we're physically not with because we're re we're remote, uh, but we are in spirit and uh, and through the magic of radio and electronics, uh, Bill and Bo Winnick are uh, here tonight with us, and we're going to get to some other callers. Um, I don't think I've ever heard from Tony in South Dakota. Tony in South Dakota, you are next on Nightside. Welcome. Well, well, hello. Hi, Tony. Hi, Tony. Hi, Don Bo Winker. Hello, Tony. Great to hear from you. Uh, Dan, hey, we've made six, uh, uh, Dan, we've made six CDs with Tony DeBloy, who's calling in. He's a genius pianist who plays piano all around the entire world on cruise ships. Oh, yeah. And, he's, he's, and we've made six CDs with him as his backup band. He's a phenomenal musician. We played a Scullers Jazz Club with him and... 
uh, he's just a genius. He's a real genius. And we're now, so Tony, happy what, you what, what, what is? Do you live in South Dakota, or are you are you yes. performing out there? Where we just moved. Here. We just moved to Rapid City, South Dakota. Rapid City, South Dakota. There used to be a second baseman with the Oakland A's, Dick Green, who had a big car dealership in Rapid City, Oklahoma. I didn't know that. Yeah, he was a pretty good second baseman. Played with the um, the A's in the early 70s when they had a couple of World Series, two or three World Series victories. So check, check it out. Um, what brought you, t uh, Tony, to Rapid City, South Dakota? Did you, like, throw a dart at a map or something? Well... My no, aunt lives out relative. there, and she's retired now. Oh, okay. That's that's a good enough reason. <laughs> so if something so happens Dan? to my mom, yeah. oh, yeah. if, if something happens to my mom, Linda will come out and take care of me. All right. Uh, hold on. To, uh, Dan, I want to tell you just a little bit about Tony. Sure. He, he's had a movie made about his life and a book written about his life as well. He is an incredible human being, and even as incredible as Tony is, he has a mother who is just as incredible, if not more so, uh, Janice. Wow. Thank, Thank you, Bo. Music makes some great connections when you when you think of it. How did you guys finally meet? Were you Was Tony oh, that's, um, that's, here That's a good story. Let me tell you the story. Uh, yeah. Tony was... Um, a teenager and his mother brought him to Skipjacks, where we played a jazz brunch for 26 years in Copley Square, yeah. right across from Trinity Church. And uh, they heard on the radio that there was a jazz brunch at Skipjacks. So his mother uh, brought Tony in, and they were having brunch. Tony could not speak at that time. Um, he's blind and autistic, and uh, he's got a gift like I've never heard in my life for music. And I'll, you'll see when I tell you the rest of the story so uh, i i saw i listened to this young man whistling along to bo's trumpet solos and actually harmonizing with them i've never heard anything like it and so after the set i went over to the table and uh, i said hello to uh janice and tony tony didn't say anything but uh, she said this is my son tony and i brought him here to uh hear the jazz and uh I, and she said he's a jazz pianist so I was just being kind. I, I didn't, you know, he was just a teenager. I didn't think that he'd be that great. But I said, would he like to play a number with us in the next set? And uh, she said, sure. So we took our break, about 15 minutes or so. And uh, uh, she took Tony up to the piano. And he sat down at the piano. He didn't say a word to us. He just started playing this very complicated jazz piece by Horace Silver. But we knew it. And we, we played with him. And it was, I'm going to tell you, Dan, it was as good as any pianist I'd ever heard in my life. It was the highest level jazz, like the famous pianists like Chick Career and Oscar Peterson wow. and all these people. And I, I started to cry. I, I mean, it was just so high level. And so we ended up playing an hour straight. And Tony would just go into another song. And we, we <laughs> knew every song. And we gelled. Like we've been playing together for years, but he's sounding like he's 45 years old or something, and he's only a teenager. And so we started uh, working together, um, and uh, eventually he would play weekends there with us as the full-time pianist. And then we started making CDs, and eventually he learned how to speak. You can hear him tonight. He's speaking as well as any one of the three of us. So, Absolutely. Um, it, it just all happened. It, it's magical. We did big concerts. We did a concert with a symphony orchestra with Tony and right. Jazz, right. jazz Night in Blue. Color. Yeah, Tony played the Rhapsody in Blue, and then we did jazz with the orchestra. Uh, we've had amazing times, and it actually bro broke my heart when they moved away. But we'll be together again. Well, Tony, thank you so much for calling in. We don't get many calls You're from welcome. South Dakota, but but uh, we'll, we we certainly will remember this call. Yeah, for yeah. sure. I know. Uh, so, uh, thanks, Janice and Tony. Uh, we'll catch up again real soon. You're very welcome. Tell your great... mom and then hi. <laughs> we'll do. All right, thanks, bye bye. Tony. Appreciate it very much. Sounds so, like Dan, a, sounds uh, like a great guy. Bill, yeah, go ahead. Uh, Bill would love to tell you about one of the weddings that we've played. We've played many, uh, as I told you earlier, but Bill, tell us 
about this one. All right, I got a call one day from uh, a secretary of, of the Kennedys, um, and they said uh, Patricia Kennedy and Peter Lawford's daughter is getting married at the Kennedy compound. And, was that, uh, Sydney? Was that Sid- Sydney Lawford? Yeah, it was Sydney. Yeah, sure. Yeah, well, I, yeah, I so, knew Sydney a little bit. Yes, nice lady. Yeah, Sydney was great. She is great. I mean, so uh, I said, yeah, we're available that date. Uh, I was the one that was available. Bo was on another wedding. My father was busy, but I went down with my band and uh, played that wedding. Um, and uh, for um, for Rose, we had our guitar player take his guitar and go right to her table and play Sweet Adeline and sing it to her because <laughs> that was her song. Yeah. And uh, yeah. at the end of the wedding, Jackie Kennedy, who she, her date was Oleg Cassini, but she came right up on the stage and came right up to me and said, this was fantastic, great music. And she went to each person in the band, shook their hand, told them the same thing. So that was a, a great thrill. Boy, I'll tell you, that's those those are great memories um, to to have, and uh, yeah, I I I, re- I remember Sydney actually, <laughs> it's a very attractive yeah. young woman, absolutely very attractive. You know, well, and my father played a lot of weddings for the Vanderbilts, and Bo played for the Rockefellers. Oh goodness gracious, we we have just we uh, out. We, we played at William Vanderbilt's seventy fifth birthday party at the Breakers, which is which was his family home. Wow. You know, I have to tell you, Jack Thomas was a dear, dear friend of ours. We, Boston Globe. Uh, Boston Globe, Jack Yeah, Thomas. Boston Globe writer. What a wonderful guy. Jerry uh, and Dentaline we, and, Jerry, yeah. and Jack were wonderful friends. We just played at his memorial service not long ago, but, but he, he coined the phrase for our band. He said, Boston's house band. He wrote yeah. that in an yeah. article. And, you know, we, we were at the opening of the Faneuil Hall Marketplace, uh, the closing of the Boston Garden, both with 16-piece bands. We performed at the 150th anniversary of the Boston Public Library, 125th anniversary of the Museum of Science, five years playing the anthem for the Celtics. We played at Kyle Yastrzemski's retirement party at Anthony's Pier 4, the yeah. unveiling of Bobby Orr's statue. Uh-huh. Uh, uh, we were a favorite of Mrs. Yawkey and John Harrington. We we played for the Red Sox so many times over the years, and uh, you know what what a thrill it is to continue this legacy that my father started so many years ago. We we owe my father such a tremendous debt of gratitude for the love of music he shared with us. And you're still going strong. Let's us keep going strong here. I got Phil in Missouri. Phil in Missouri. We've uh, oh, yeah. We've, we got. Go ahead, Phil. Hey Welcome. guys. Hey. Well, thank hey. you. Well, Bill, how are you? Yes. Yeah, good, good, Phil. Thanks for calling. Well, I talked to the last time or the time before that you're on, and it was uh, fun to connect. But uh, Bo just gave me a great lead into what I was going to say is that, you know, all the the tremendous fun times we had at uh, Point Sebago up in Maine. Oh, my God. You guys played there, and Alan Vachon and Glenn Hansen and I would come there as many weekends as we could sneak out. And, uh, uh, but I remember one night in particular, <clears throat> you were talking about your dad's musicality. You know, the family was playing, as always, up there. And, and But there were times, if I'm sure you recall, that you guys would get into a little bit of friction with each other on stage. Mm-hmm. And uh, there was one evening that uh, you, that Bilbo and, and Annette all teamed up on Ed and walked off the stage. Uh, <laughs> I do remember that, right? And uh, and I remember Ed sat down. He had that that like sixty six key piano, that small. Yes, I r- piano remember it well. That he traveled yeah, done, with, right? Cause he, uh, he, uh, just a, I, I think we got to we have to let people know that you were a high school classmate of ours, and all those yeah, people yeah. your name were our classmates. That's right. And so, but your dad sat at that piano and he sat it to play. And I don't know, but he played probably for 20 minutes solid without looking up, you know, without looking away from that piano and just mesmerized the crowd. It was one of the most beautiful performances I ever saw. A spontaneous performance like that. And he stood there and he wowed that crowd or sat there and wowed the crowd. Now, did his bandmates eventually come back on stage, Phil? Oh, you guys eventually did wander back. You couldn't be out of the spotlight that long. It's, uh... <laughs> All right, Phil, I hate to do this to you. I, I, should have, I should not have taken you as quickly as I did, but I didn't want you to have to wait through the break. But i gotta, I got to make another break here. So um, 
thanks for checking well, in from I, Missouri, and uh, you're welcome to join hey, us any night. I yeah. assume you're first time calling at Nightside tonight. Yes, he is. Yes, yes. <laughs> All right. Thanks. Well, where about where about in Missouri? You. Do you hang your hat these days? Just outside of St. Louis, actually, uh, in uh, St. Charles County, next county west. Uh, sure. Yeah. My wife and I are retired out here with our granddaughter, and we just have a very very happy life. Oh, that's great. That's great. We're envious. Phil, thanks so much for calling. You're welcome to listen to Nightside, by the way, to keep in touch with Boston, even on nights when the Winnickers aren't with us. I want you to know that, okay? <laughs> okay, great. Well, thanks. Thank you, Phil. Appreciate night, it very thanks. much. Thanks. Gentlemen, we got to take a quick break, so uh, what can we wrestle up here for about, you know, 15, 20, 25 seconds just to, um, what do you got? <laughs> oh, they're going right to it. Okay. <laughs> Nightside with Dan Ray on WBZ, Boston's News Radio. Bill and Bo Winnegar, let's go to Texas. Dan is in uh. Texas. Hey Dan, welcome. Join we have, we're we're skipping across the country tonight. You're on oh, with the winners, Bill and Bo. Go ahead, Dan. Hey Dan, how are you? Doing great. How uh, are... You know, I'm I was one year ahead of you at Latin school. I didn't realize that. <laughs> so, what are you doing yeah, in Texas you, these we, days? Well, um, I uh, have this marvelous uh, job at uh, that MD Anderson Cancer Center. I'm a uh, a cancer doctor, do, we do cancer research, we develop brand new drugs for patients who've been told they're out of bullets. And we, we make new bullets for them. Boy, I'll tell you, we, that uh, is, that's better than being a talk show host. I, that's drugs. better than being a talk show host. I want you to know that. Can, that's well, wonderful. Well, I think you've affected uh, millions of people, and uh, I've been listening to you for many years, and I, I uh, always good to see a Latin school boy make good. Wow. Uh, you got to drop me a note, or you got to leave a number uh, when we finish with Rob, so we can be in touch. Okay, it's 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 wonderful to to reconnect with people after all this time. Say hi to the Winnikers. I assume that they're um, uh, they're well known in in your family as well. Well, I've been playing with them for fifty years. I started playing with Billy at Harvard at the at Levin House. He came and played with me actually at Vanderbilt Hall. And uh, he was uh, a teenager at the time, and Billy was, uh, Bo was about 14 or 15, so I, uh, that was in the 60s. So we've been making music together for uh, uh, about a half a century. Yeah, Dan is a great when piano player. back to Boston, we make, we make some music. Un well, unbelievable to, to have the talent that you have as a... Uh, as a as a doctor, as a physician, and also to have the musical acumen to be able to 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 hold your own with the Winnikers. That's this pretty good stuff. Well, here I don't think any, I don't think anybody holds their own with Bo and Bill. They're the best. But but we uh, we do it. We try. We keep up. They're they're very gracious, and they uh, uh, we make some good music together. Wow, that is you know that is fabulous. you know what they said about Larry Bird. Larry Bird and four other human beings would be a championship basketball team, right? <laughs> yes, sir. So Bill and Bo and any other number of humans would be a fabulous orchestra. <laughs> well, where are you, are you located in Houston or whereabouts in Texas? Well, I'm actually north of Houston now in a really nice, cute little town called um, uh, Montgomery. But I'm actually coming from the Conroe Symphony. We're playing a, a patriotic patriotic uh, uh, program Saturday, uh, a concert for the, we have a, Conroe's about the size of uh, Newton, as a mayor, it has, it's like Newton, wow. uh, about the same kind of demographics, and uh, they invited me to come and play uh, for these uh, wonderful, have you ever heard of the Victory Bells, these wonderful girls who sing all this patriotic music about our country? I have heard Pretty of them, special. I have heard of them, actually. Pre Three lovely girls. They're from. They're in New Orleans at the uh, World War II Museum, and uh, we just met them tonight. We had a dress rehearsal, and uh, I uh, just. It was a. It was kind of a, a God wink. I called Billy yesterday. He said, "Doctor Dan, you have to call Doctor Dan Ray. 
He's a Latin school classmate almost. So uh, it's a small. So world. here I am. You know, <laughs> it's a small world. I gotta tell you, I've said this before, but you know that I use the principles of of Ed and Bill and Bo. Their musical performance principles. They cut across every profession. I I teach the young doctors uh, the, the these principles of, of per performance that you always have to be early. You have to get your instrument tuned before you show up. You got to never introduce yourself in front of a patient. Uh, you got to know who the the decision maker is. It's usually the woman in the room who's driving the health care. I mean, uh, all these principles I, uh, I learned from Bo and Bill and Ed. You know, um, I was always white shirt, dark suit, look nice. Well, I'll give, you like one, I'll give you one other principle that my great friend Ted Lepsey, who played for the Red Sox for many, many years, if you ever were going to go to lunch with Ted, if you showed up at 5 minutes to 12, he considered you were late. Uh, and he said that you never get penalized for being early. So <laughs> that's kind of, you can add yeah, that one no. as well. Dr. Dan, I got to run, no, okay, right. but I can get in touch with you through Bill and Bo. And thank you so much. I want to get one more local caller in here before we have to uh, give way to the 11 o'clock news. Thanks again, uh, Doctor. I really honestly am honored that you call and I appreciate you taking the time tonight. Oh, my honor. Thanks for everything you do. We'll Thanks, Dr. Dan. <laughs> wow, you guys got a you guys got a, some great friends. Uh, if you get a chance, Rob, uh, get Dan's on uh, Dr. Dan's phone number for me. Okay, Gene in Brookline. Gene, a little closer to home here with Bill and Bo. Go ahead, Gene. Hi, everybody. It's Jeannie from Bellows. Bill. We miss you, Jeannie. We miss you. Oh, yeah. We have a new we have a new gig coming up uh, April twenty seventh on another restaurant. Well, we'll tell you all you about tell it. Tell me now. Yes, go right the, ahead. Restaurant, go right ahead. the restaurant's called Cook, and it's in Needham, and we're going to play there okay. Thursday night, April 27th. That'll be the first night. Cook, April 27th? Yeah. It's 139 Chapel Street in 109. Needham. Oh, 109 Chapel Street in Needham. Okay, so what the restaurant is, is Cook, Cook, as in C-O-O-K. -okay. Easy to find, yeah. uh, to Google that. And you guys are going to be there Thursday night, April 27th, the little yeah, two, that, weeks from, two weeks from last yeah. night. Yeah, and that'll be our first okay. night. Hopefully, hopefully there'll be many more to follow. I hope so, too. I miss you guys. Well, we miss you, too. Okay, yeah, well, you I'll, so I'll definitely be there. Jeannie, I can, okay. take, I can take the ride to need them. All right. Yeah. Okay, good night, guys. Jeannie, thank All you right, very much. Thanks for calling. All right, Bill yeah. and Bo, let me ask you real quickly. we got less than a minute left, but if folks want to get in touch uh, with you guys, what's the easiest way? Obviously, uh, get in touch and go to Cook's on the 27th of April. What's well, the easiest the, way? The best way is to go to winnikermusic.com, W-I-N-I-K-E-R, winnikermusic.com. Uh, that, that's our website, and uh, well, you can get our access to us right there. You can send us a message, or you can call us. Perfect, perfect. Gentlemen, thanks very much. This was as much fun. I had expected it would be a fun hour. Uh, again, you, you guys are legends. And why don't you play us out? We're going to head to the to the news and um, anything you would like, and we will talk sometime early next week, okay? Bill and Bo Winnegar, ladies and gentlemen, of the Winnegar Family Band, a legendary band in Boston. I think it's Boston's best band. Jack Thomas, the great Jack Thomas, said Boston's house band. I say Boston's best band. Go ahead, gentlemen, play us out.